In the heart of Derbyshire, nestled in the quiet village of Cromford, stands a place where the modern world began to turn. This is no ordinary mill, this is Cromford Mill, the spark that ignited a revolution. The modern world had to start somewhere, and in this quiet corner of Derbyshire, it started with a mill and one man's big idea. This is a story of invention, ambition and transformation of how a mill in Derbyshire became the beating heart of the Industrial Revolution. This is Cromford Mill and it was built in 1771 by Sir Richard Arkwright. It wasn't just a mill, it was the world's first successful water-powered cotton spinning factory and it changed everything. It was here at Cromford that Arkwright combined machinery, power and labour all under one roof for the very first time. What he created wasn't just a mill, he'd created the blueprint for the modern factory. Inside these walls, men, women and even children work shifts by candlelight. As the spinning frames clattered and the water wheels turned day and night, it was the dawn of a new era in industry, in society and the world. As the Industrial Revolution gathered pace, Cromford emerged as a hub of innovation driven by Sir Richard Arkwright's cotton mills. But with production booming, a faster, more efficient transport system was essential to bring in raw materials and to move the finished goods. This is the Cromford Canal and it was built in about the 1790s, but it was more than just a waterway, it was the mill's lifeline. Before the canals, transporting cotton and coal was slow, costly and often impossible over rough roads. But with canals like this, heavy loads could glide smoothly across the landscape, being pulled by horses along the towpath. The canal connected Cromford to the wider world, carrying coal, limestone, iron and cotton to the markets across Britain. The canals transformed the landscape, linking rural valleys to the engines of industry. Here, steam met water, innovation met infrastructure, and a new economy flowed through these stone locks and on the narrowboats. It may be very quiet and peaceful walking along the towpath today, but back in its heyday, the canal would have been alive with the sound of boats, workers, of moving goods, all linking Cromford to the great networks of the Industrial Revolution. Demand soon overtook the production capabilities of Cromford and a second, much bigger mill was needed to meet the huge demand for woven textiles. Just down the valley is Masson Mill, built in 1783 by Sir Richard Arkwright. Masson Mill was his crowning achievement, a model of industrial efficiency and modern engineering. This was no ordinary mill. With its towering red brick design and state-of-the-art water wheel, it was Arkwright's boldest step in revolutionising the cotton industry. by the River Derwent and driven by machinery, Massa Mill brought together raw cotton, advanced spinning frames and a disciplined workforce. It perfected the formula that Arkwright had first tested at Cromford.
Here, the rhythm of the Industrial Revolution echoed for the Derwent Valley. Its legacy woven just not into textiles, but into the very fabric of the modern world. As the rollers drew out the fibres, the rotating spindles twisted them into yarn, which was then wound onto bobbins. Dozens of threads were spun at once on the spinning frame, and these machines were lined up in rows over the factory floor. At its height, Mass and Mills would have had a thousand looms running around the clock. focus on our crite and the machinery but these mills were powered by people whole families worked here children as young as six were crawling underneath the moving machinery women would operate the spinning frames and the men would maintain the heavy equipment the hours were long often 13 to 14 hours a day the work was noisy dangerous and relentless but it brought something people had never had before, regular wages. So Richard Arkwright employed around a thousand workers throughout his mills in the Derwent Valley. In the late 1700s, men working in the mills were paid around 15 to 17 shillings a week. That's around about 75 pence in today's money. Women and children were paid far less. No equal opportunities back then. Arkwright even built houses for his workers, whole rows of cottages that are still standing at Cromford today. He built schools for the children, he built a chapel for his workers. He didn't just create a factory, he created an entire industrial community. Now let's head uphill to a hidden gem of the Industrial Revolution, Lumsdale Valley. Lumsdale is a dramatic gorge packed with crumbling stone ruins, old mills, grinding workshops and water management systems. Long before cotton spinning, this valley was alive with water-powered industry. To power all this, the valley needed water and lots of it. The mills relied on a complex system of dams and mill ponds, carefully channeling the water from Bentley Brook to feed the water wheels. Check out what you found, Joe. What is it? I can see there's impressions on the wall and there's some I am both sides. This, this is for? one of Lumsdale's main water wheel housings. You can see that now that you, you can see, it, I can you see can, it. You can see where the axle of the water wheel used to be. Yeah. Look at the size yeah, of the thing. It it's Huge, enormous, isn't it? isn't it? Yeah. And all powered by that mill pond that's just, yeah, uh, just, just behind us. We tend to think about steam engines when we talk of the Industrial Revolution, but in places like Lumsdale, it all started with water. The mills were crammed into this narrow valley and they all drew their power from the same stream. In the 17th and 18th century, Lumsdale's mills ground corn, minerals and powdered lead works. It later adapted to cotton bleaching and dyeing, linking directly to the textile trade of Cromford and Masson.
walking through Lumsdale today, you can really see and feel the history of industry here. This is the oldest building in the valley and it dates from the 1600s, but just like Arkwright's mills, it used water to power its machinery. The innovation that started here spread across Britain, then across the globe. The factory system, mechanised production, industrial labour, they all began on the banks and hillsides of the Derwent Valley.